been looking at one verse in the Quran. Chapter 18, verse 86 tells us where the sun sets every evening. Spoiler alert, the answer is ridiculous and very much in line with what an illiterate 7th century Bedouin may have believed. The verse claims a powerful man reached the setting place of the sun and found it setting into a blackened muddy spring of water. In terms of scientific errors in the Quran, it can't get more blatant than this verse. And it was probably the verse that I was most shocked to discover and the one that eventually allowed me to realize for the first time that the Quran is at best compromised and at worst a complete fabrication and falsely attributed to a divine all-knowing source. Now, this is going to be a lengthy video because I hope to put this issue beyond any doubt whatsoever for those who are intellectually honest enough to listen objectively, free from emotional bias to the evidence I present. I will put forward a number of arguments organized into four general sections and a summary. The first will be the language and context used in the verse. The second will be the nature of springs. Thirdly, what Muhammad himself said about this. And finally, what early Muslim scholars understood when they read the verse by looking extensively at the earliest commentaries slash exegeses. I will finally conclude by summarizing briefly at the end. So if you want to skip through to a particular argument or straight to the conclusion, click on the area of the screen where you want to go. And as always in my videos, the sources I use are all in the description box so you can check them for yourself. Now, this is the second video on my critique of the Quran's 18th chapter, Surat Al-Kahf, which means the cave. You can access the first video again by clicking on this cute picture of Saudi Arabia's most senior Islamic scholar. For millennia, human beings have looked up at the sky and tried to make sense of what was happening. Humans needed explanations and were never really capable of being satisfied with a we don't yet know answer. For example, in Egyptian mythology, the sun travels across the sky in a boat, setting somewhere on the Earth's surface and then traveling through the underworld to its rising place. When I saw this verse clearly for the first time, I desperately looked around for a convincing explanation. But every single apologetic argument I looked up that was defending the verse seemed extremely illogical. It seemed clear to me like Muslims were desperately trying to give an answer, any answer, for the sake of just giving a response to get rid of that pesky cognitive dissonance in their minds, and then claiming it wasn't an error and that the Quran is still perfect. It didn't seem to matter to them if their attempted rebuttal was able to withstand any form of basic scrutiny. Some tried to twist the Arabic meaning of the words, and as an Arab, I was able to see straight through that dishonesty. I was quite disappointed to see how many Muslims were willing to blind themselves and lie to themselves when it was so obviously a major error. If you are a Muslim watching this, please understand that Islam is not an ethnicity or an identity you can do nothing about. It's a choice. You may not have had any choice going in, but you certainly don't have to stand by it no matter what and become irrational in blind defense if and when you are shown it to be false. Also, please watch this video from start to finish before commenting. A small minority of Muslims on my channel seem to automatically thumb down and leave negative comments without even watching the entire thing and repeating arguments that I actually address in the video. If you want to argue that I'm mistranslating anything, then please go over and watch the Arabic version of this video where I don't use a single translation. Okay, lengthy introduction over, let's get going. Now, as I showed in my previous video, Muhammad was challenged to prove his prophethood by correctly relaying ancient stories, including the story of a man called Dhul Qarnayn, which means the man with two horns. This man with two horns had been given great power in the world, and Muslims say he ruled the entire world. This Dhul Qarnayn traveled all the way to the west of the earth to see the sun setting. So let's take a look at the verse in question. Till when he reached the setting place of the sun, he found it setting in a muddy spring and found a people thereabout. We said, O oh, Dhul Qarnayn, either punish or show them kindness. Now, to any rational person who is not heavily indoctrinated in believing that this Quran is true no matter what, this verse alone, as it stands, is all the evidence you need. I shouldn't even need to go any further. If this verse was found in the Hindu scriptures or the Bible, Muslims would laugh at this and point to it as clear evidence that the scripture is outright false or has been compromised and changed by humans. Denying the clear meaning of this verse is a clear sign of desperation and only serves to show that your God is flawed as you're practically saying he means something other than what he's written. I will be including links to three Islamic websites that I found which try to explain this away in the description box. However, the main and probably only apologist argument is that this verse doesn't actually mean the Qur'an actually found the sun setting in a muddy spring. It was only his belief that he saw it setting there because he was confused after seeing it set over the horizon. Now, first of all, the Quran claims itself to be clear in all these verses. 
It also says its verses are explained in detail here in this verse. It tells us it's a book for which there is no doubt in this verse. To suggest that this is anything but literal is suggesting that the Quran is not actually clear, and that goes against what the Quran says about itself. Also, please be honest with yourselves. If you saw this verse, then hundreds of years after Muhammad, people had discovered the sun physically set in a muddy spring, maybe somewhere really far like Mexico, wouldn't you be calling this a miracle? Or would you still argue that it wasn't meant literally, and the fact that we actually found it setting in a muddy spring was just a mere coincidence? I actually do think the Quran is fairly clear. I don't even want to get started on the flawed logic of why the Quran would even include the Qur'an's mistaken perspective in the first place. But let's assume there was some mysterious reason behind this. If it wanted to tell us that the sun was only setting from Dhul Qarnayn's perspective, it would have used different wording. He could have said something simple like, he thought he saw it as if it was setting in a muddy spring, when in fact it does not actually set on earth because it's a lot bigger. But the Quran doesn't even say any of this. It uses the absolute strongest word available to it to tell us he found it setting in a muddy spring. For those who want to keep arguing, let me bring you another example from the Quran itself, where something similar is written extremely clearly with absolutely no room for error in interpretation or understanding. The Quran happens to state that Jesus was not actually crucified, but it only appeared that way to the people who were there. So will the Quran say that eyewitnesses found Jesus being crucified on the cross? That they said in boast, we killed Christ Jesus the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, but they killed him not, nor crucified him, but so it was made to appear to them, and those who differ therein are full of doubts, with no certain knowledge, but only conjecture to follow, for of a surety they killed him not. The crucial part here, in Arabic, it says, وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ which means it was made to appear to them. It makes all the difference. You won't find two tafsirs contesting whether or not Jesus did die on the cross because the verse is clear. It tells us he didn't die on the cross and it only appeared that way for the people at the time. If this idea was also meant for Dhul Qarnayn, seeing the sun setting into the spring of muddy water, then why wasn't walakin shubbiha lahum not used in that instance? The word wajada, meaning to find, appears in 35 verses in the Quran. I challenge anyone to show me an example of where this word is used in the Quran to indicate something that is only from the visual perspective of someone. The word wajada, to find, even appears twice in the same verse we are speaking about. Till when he reached the setting place of the sun, he found it setting in a muddy spring and found a people thereabout. Clearly, Dhul Qarnayn actually did find people there because he was told to judge over them. Was he told to judge over people who only appeared to him visually? Or did he actually find the sun setting in a spring of muddy water, just like he found the people? So Muslims here have to pretend that the first usage of the word wajada means something different to the second usage in the same verse. They do this with absolutely no basis for